Hello and welcome to our roundup of the European Parliament's latest plenary session here in Strasbourg. This week, the EPP group pushed for action on the migration crisis on Europe's southern borders, pushed for the adoption of the digital agenda and single market, and helped push through a new anti-money laundering law in the EU. We begin our coverage with the EPP plan to turn rhetoric into deeds on achieving a more humane and effective EU migration policy. Diplomatic efforts in the EU and UN went into overdrive this week, even as thousands more risked their lives trying to make the dangerous Mediterranean crossing to Europe. Maltese member and EPP group expert on the issue, Roberto Mezzola, said the next action was to stop African-based human trafficking at its source. Any action that we take needs to involve um, the, the combating and the destruction of trafficking networks. However, we have also said that it's a priority to save lives. And my message here is that we cannot focus only on the smuggling networks and undermine the human, humanitarian situation. EPP Group Chairman Manfred Weber said EU legal solidarity had to reflect citizens' concern for the refugees' plight and the concern for how best to improve their lot. And if the people in Europe would say yes, and I'm sure a lot of people will say yes, then, I'm, then we have to recognize that it is a European challenge for us. We as Europeans have to answer this. For us as EPP group, the question of a solidarity mechanism on European level is on the table. We have to talk now to each other to define the criteria, probably a threshold. European Commissioner for Migration and Home Affairs Dimitris Avramopoulos promised that a new principled and simple action plan aimed at defeating smuggling would be unveiled in coming days. Europe will extend a helping hand to those in need and will strive to attract those we need. But this will be balanced by strong and targeted action for those who try to abuse our system. New EU responses include resettling 20,000 refugees in Europe from Syria and Libya, while tripling the budget for Frontex and Poseidon border control operations all along the Mediterranean. The digital agenda represents one of the EU's biggest prospects for creating jobs and economic growth. EPP group experts here pushed hard to adopt a new strategy which would help create greater trust amongst Europe's half a billion citizens. But what to do when only 38% of people in a recent EU survey feel confident buying online from another EU country? That same survey found that only 7% of small and medium-sized businesses in the EU even sell cross-border, finding it too complicated and expensive to adapt to 28 different sets of national rules. The potential is huge. Between 2001 and 2011, Digitalization accounted for an estimated 30% of GDP growth in the EU, but still lower than the U.S.'s 55% over the same period. Christianis Karins is the EPP Group spokesperson in the Industry Committee on Digital Single Market Legislation. The Commission has taken now finally the first but important step to tear down the existing barriers that we have in the digital world, to make the digital world match more the physical world where we can freely cross borders without any hindrances, to have that same be true in the digital world, in digital commerce and digital services. Problems remain in areas like geo-blocking, when online sellers either deny consumers access to a website based on their geographical location, or reroute them to a local store with different and often higher prices. And then there are those still costly roaming charges. Andreas Schwab, EPP Group spokesperson on consumer issues, remains hopeful. The strategy in a certain way will embark on a lot of uh, old responsibilities of member states where they will not like to give up. You can see it with roaming, you can see it with other traditions like geo-blocking, but I think on these specific points you can find solutions quite easily. Sometimes it's just a question of timing to overcome resistances. Parliament also passed a new money laundering and tax evasion law to sharply curtail the ability of companies and individuals to conceal the true identities of their offshore holdings and accounts. Estimates suggest that money laundering accounted for 1.4 trillion euros in 2009. It's thought to be much higher now. EPP Group member Christianis Karins, co-author on money laundering legislation, spelled out the historic challenge for criminal investigators. We have company registers that show who the owner of a company is. 
The difficulty is that an owner can be an individual or another company. And you can have a chain of a company owning a company owning a company. These are what are often called shell companies, where when you try to figure out actually who is behind it, it may be that person in the beginning, but you simply cannot see that. Aimed at limiting the scope of criminal and terrorist activity in Europe, the law will also come down hard on banks. Those failing to comply with new EU anti-money laundering rules could face fines of up to at least 5 million euros or 10 percent of their annual turnover in future. So, is it game over for money launderers? It's always impossible to say, is this, is this it? Uh, from experience as a lawmaker, uh, we can say that it, it never stops because also the criminal mind never stops. And uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, there will be innovations there and that lawmaking will have to stay apace with those. Member states will now have two years to adopt the new EU law into national legislation, creating a linked up register for fighting tax crime across EU borders. That's all for now from the Strasbourg session. See you again next week from Brussels. And find out more about the largest political force in Parliament by going to eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.